Welcome to my home kitchen, Amici. And today, what I'm gonna do is show you how to easily hand stretch the perfect round pizza and bake it in your oven. If you've watched my previous video on making the perfect at-home dough for making pizza in your home oven, you'll have made some dough balls and have them resting already in your kit in your refrigerator. I want you to remove the dough from the refrigerator 90 minutes before you're planning on baking it. This will allow that dough to warm up, relax, and it'll give you a much lighter, crispier pizza crust. We also have a separate video on making the perfect pizza sauce to use at home. I want you to take the pizza sauce out of the refrigerator, usually after about 12 to 16 hours that it's been in there, but up to one day. Take the, the, the sauce out of the refrigerator at the same time that you remove your pizza dough and it'll be just fine. This will give you enough time to prepare all the rest of your ingredients shred your mozzarella, everything else that you're gonna need, and it'll have you at this point right now. In order to stretch dough, if you've never done this before, or if you're constantly saying, I start to stretch my dough, and I get all these weird, unusual shapes, it comes out every shape except for round, I'm gonna give you some really awesome tips on how to stretch that dough really easily. When I teach, uh, when I teach kids classes, I show a method using a stainless steel bowl, or in this case, an aluminum bowl. The bowl that I'm using has a flat bottom so that it'll sit flat on your countertop. What I'd like you to do is take a bowl, place it upside down. I'm gonna take some olive oil and I'm gonna place it just in the center of the bowl on the flat spot like this. And then with my fingers, I'm just gonna kinda of rub this around the exterior of the bowl. This is gonna create a non-stick surface so that it's very easy for you to lift the dough up and get it to where it needs to go. The idea is that we're gonna spread the dough in a nice uniform layer so it's the same thickness in the middle as it is on the edges. Everything else will come together. I promise you this is gonna be the greatest method that you've ever tried. Now, my dough is sitting inside a box if you watch the video, you might even have your dough inside an individual container with a lid on it. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take my dough out of the box. I'm gonna use just a little bit of flour to remove the dough, and I'm gonna have this beautiful, nice dough ball that's been out for about 90 minutes now at this point. When we stretch pizza dough, it's really important to remember that the outside area of this dough ball is actually gonna be the bottom of our pizza crust. The reason being is that this outside exterior edge has a little bit drier surface than the part that's underneath that's a little bit more humid. This is the part that was touching the box. When we get this to the point that we're gonna slide the pizza from the pizza peel directly onto our stone, in my case, we're gonna bake on a pizza steel today. It'll give you really good uh, guarantee that it's gonna come off the peel and go into the oven. So we always wanna make sure that the top of the dough ball is the bottom of the pizza crust. You're gonna to need to pay attention. The way that I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna make sure that it's the bottom. I'm gonna take the part of the dough that was touching the inside of the box and I'm gonna put it face down on top of the bowl. So now that I know that the part that I'm touching or my fingers are touching is gonna to be the outside area. It's also gonna make sure that I don't have a lot of oil on the crust and it'll help it slide again. Now, my hands have a little bit of olive oil on them, right? And this is gonna ensure that my surface is non-stick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to press this dough onto the flat portion of the bowl. Now, when we start pressing this onto the flat portion of the bowl, you'll start to notice that all by itself, the dough is really round. It's already got this raised outside edge, which we call the cornicione, that's not disturbed. And little by little, it's starting to go down the edges of the bowl all by itself. This is probably already better than whatever method you've been using previously. We never want to use a rolling pin. So if you have that in your head, get it out right away. We want to do this by hand because 
all of the air bubbles that we've retained, I can see that there's those bubbles right here and this dough is looking fantastic. I'm gonna keep moving the bowl around so that now that my interior here, the middle part is nice and uniform flat, by using the bowl method, it won't be super thin in the middle and we won't have a lot of excess dough on the exterior either. All I have to do now is just take my hands and just start pushing the dough down the sides of the bowl. I'm just pressing into the middle so that my hands are making contact with the bowl. I'm not pushing down. This is happening because of that little lubrication that we did with the olive oil on the bowl. As soon as my dough gets to the bottom of the bowl, this is the point that I'm gonna stop. I can see that now on this edge it started to go, but I have a little bit left to go on this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just press from the middle down the sides here, and this will continue to press the dough to the bottom layer, very nice and even and uniform. And then you'll be able to feel as I'm hitting the bottom and it's starting to touch the bottom of the bowl, this is the point where I'm ready to stop and this will give me a really nice uniform round crust. Because we put that little bit of olive oil now, all I have to do is just grab the dough by the edge and literally just peel this dough off and you'll be able to see that we have this beautiful round pizza crust. So simple, right? This is where you have a decision to make. Are you gonna make a really thin pizza or are you gonna have a pizza that's got some structure in the middle? To me, this is the perfect size. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna stretch this anymore. I'm gonna take a little bit of this flour that's called semola rimacinata. Semola rimacinata is durum wheat flour. That's what gives it this yellowish color. This is the same as semolina. Semola rimacinata refers to the way that this flour was ground. Because it's rimacinata to mean uh, ground again, it's got this flour consistency, it's very fine. If you were just to use semolina flour, semolina flour is not ground as much and it's got a little bit of a fine grit to it. Either one is acceptable for this. What I'm gonna do is take a little bit of this semola, I'm gonna put it on my, in this case, I've got a, a bamboo pizza peel here. Uh, if you've got a wood one, maybe you have a, a perforated one, there's metal, there's all kinds of different types of pizza peels to use. But I would say that this is very simple to do if you, are, um, if you have a pizza peel and you're gonna be working in this method. If you're a little nervous about sliding your pizza off of the peel, what I would suggest is get yourself a little bit of parchment paper. We can place this round directly on the parchment paper, put the parchment paper directly on top of the pizza peel, build the pizza, and then we have no problem at all transferring it. If you don't have a pizza peel, you could very easily use the back of uh, maybe like a, a sheet pan or a cookie sheet or something like that, and all you're really doing is just taking it and pulling it so that the slides right onto the stone or your steel and you'll have very good results as well. Now, I've got some flour here. I'm gonna just take this dough and I can actually feel that this is, uh, this is really nice. I can feel that uh, the dough feels awesome. I'm gonna lay it right on top of my peel and because I put this little bit of flour, I can give it a jiggle and it'll move with me. And this is really important because if you're gonna try to get this off, of this pizza peel. If it's stuck, all your ingredients are gonna go into the oven and your dough is gonna be stuck to the peel. So we're gonna do this one more time just before we get ready to go into the oven. We're gonna give this a little shake just like this. If you go to move the pizza peel and it doesn't move, I'm gonna tell you lift this up, put a little bit more flour underneath and then go ahead and just lay the crust back here. If it looks like it shrank a little bit, it's very simple to just take the dough, put it on the backs of your hands, just like this, and just give this a little pull. And this will open the dough up and make it much thinner. It'll also make it wider. My dough is looking pretty good. You could probably even just kind of adjust this with your hands, but this looks perfect, okay? I'm ready to start building my pizza. It's really important that when we're ready to start baking, 
all your ingredients are near you so that you don't have to stop and go and get stuff from uh, somewhere else. The reason again being that this crust now is going to want to stick to this board. So the more or the longer that it takes, the more chance you have that it's going to stick a little bit. Again, we're not really worried. I can see that my crust is moving really easily. It's nice and round and that's really what the point is of this whole thing. Now, I've got my pizza sauce here that I took out. Uh, this has been out for probably about 90 minutes already. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is give my sauce a really good stir. In my pizza sauce recipe that you watched previously on my video, you'll notice that we added raw sea salt directly to the tomatoes. This tomato sauce is not cooked either. This is a very natural, clean tomato sauce. And the reason why I'm giving this a really good stir is just to ensure that if any of that salt settled onto the bottom and we didn't mix it enough in the first part, that it's going to be evenly distributed through this uh, sauce. Now, this is, next part is really up to what you prefer personally. I like to, I really don't want to have too much sauce on top of this pizza because I want a really good balance. I'm using just a regular tablespoon here, but uh, I'm going to put a couple um, spoonfuls of this sauce right directly in the center. I'm going to make sure that I don't drip sauce anywhere off the base of the crust. The reason being, if we get anything wet on this surface, the pizza crust will stick to the board and you'll have a lot of problems releasing it. I'm going to take my spoon and I'm not using anything special here, not a ladle, I'm just using a spoon. I'm going to press down directly in the middle and just kind of give this a rotation back and forth all the way around and this will spread really nice and even. I'm just going to keep spreading this around and you'll see that this for me is the perfect amount of sauce for this pizza. Again, we shouldn't be overpowering this pizza crust with tomato sauce or even mozzarella. When I go and apply the mozzarella as well, I want to make sure that I've got a nice uniform coat, but I always want to make sure that I can see the, the tomato sauce peeking through the bottom. I've got fresh basil inside of my sauce. I really love the flavor of basil. I can even go ahead and maybe get another leaf of fresh basil just like this, squeeze it with my hand, and then just kind of hand tear this on top of the, uh, the crust here as well. If you like to use hard cheese, I can get myself some Parmigiano Reggiano. I always love the flavor of Parmigiano. Um, Parmigiano, I love the fa uh, flavor of Pecorino Romano. But I think that in this type of pizza, very classically, uh, a bit of Parmesan would be awesome. This is Parmigiano Reggiano, 12, 24 month age. It's got the right rind, right? That shows that this physically came from the uh, uh, region of uh, Emilia Romagna and uh, it's certified as being the real stuff. We can take the, the wrapper just like this. I can grate a little bit of this Parmigiano right on top of the sauce. I like to bake this, uh, put this Parmigiano right on top of the sauce because it'll give me the flavor of the Parmigiano. But when I stick this pizza inside of the oven, our home ovens are gonna bake slower than a typical pizzeria oven would. So by putting this Parmigiano in at this point, you're not going to see it burnt on top of the pizza. It's going to kind of melt in with the mozzarella. I'm using whole milk mozzarella here that I grated by hand just a little while ago. And this is going to allow me to have that whole milk mozzarella. It's going to spread really nice onto the top of the pizza and it'll brown really nice on top. Spotty. It's not going to be overly brown across the top. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this mozzarella and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of sprinkle it all the way around the edges. Now if you're one of those people that says I love a lot of mozzarella on top of my pizza I'm going to tell you that remember that this is kind of like a, a balance. We don't want to have so much mozzarella that it takes forever for our cheese to melt meaning that the crust baked before our cheese was ever done and vice versa. I don't want to have not enough mozzarella 
that the base is not going to be cooked or it's too cooked and vice versa it's not going to be done at the same time so like this the thing i love is that as this mozzarella is on top of this pizza i can see the basil kind of poking through i can see the tomatoes kind of poking through and those little chunks of fresh tomato that are on here will also poke through in the final pizza this is our classic margarita pizza for us I'm gonna add finishing steps when it comes out of the oven. But for right now, I'm gonna give this peel just a little jiggle, make sure that it moves. And now I know that this will actually release right onto my pizza steel. Come on over to the oven and I'm gonna show you how I get it in there. My oven is preheated. I shook the peel to make sure that this moves. And what I'm gonna do is now slide this pizza directly onto the steel. I'm going to close the oven right away so that we don't lose a lot of extra heat. And then I'm just going to monitor the pizza to look at the cheese, how it's baking, and then the bottom of the crust. My pizza smells amazing. The whole house smells like freshly baked pizzas. And I'm going to check, and I think this pizza is ready to come out of the oven. Let me go around. I'm going to pull this pizza out. I'm going to set this up on top over here. I've got a cooling rack set up. And the reason why I like to use a cooling rack is because the extra heat is going to create steam on the bottom of the pizza. And if we take this right away and put it on a platter or a plate or right on a cutting board, it's going to uh, create this uh, uh, maybe chewy surface on the bottom that's not going to be light and crispy. I look at the edge and I can see how beautiful and bubbly this has become. And then I can also see the bottom is perfect. It's really hot right now. I'd like to cut this for you so we can take a look at the inner structure of this pizza. Now that I've given this pizza a few minutes to cool down, I'm gonna transfer this to my cutting board and I can already feel just by touching the bottom how crispy this is. If we listen real carefully, we'll probably be able to hear it crackle as I cut all the way through. A pizza this size, I wouldn't cut in any more than six slices. If it's just you and your family at home, I would say cut this down the middle and do four slices. You've got another dough, make a couple of dough, extra dough balls, make a few pizzas, and this will definitely be enough for a nice portion uh, for someone to eat along with a nice salad and anything else you had to serve. Let's cut this. So crispy. I'm gonna cut this into six. Look at how beautiful the structure is on this. I can see all of those uniform air bubbles all the way through, so well baked. The exterior is super crispy. I can hear it snapping as I cut into this. Gotta try it out. The first thing that I notice when I bite into this is the texture of the bottom of the crust, this part here. It's super crispy. But because we didn't press the dough and release all those air bubbles, I got this really light interior that's fluffy. And then the topping, that tomato sauce with the little bit of garlic that's in it and that fresh basil really shines and then finishes off with that beautiful mozzarella, the whole milk mozzarella. I love this so much and I hope that you try this at home. So on behalf of me, Leo Spazzeri, I hope this encourages you to bake pizzas with me and bake all the time. If you haven't already liked me on social media, make sure you search for my channels at Ask Chef Leo and go to my website, leospazzeri.com for more great content. On behalf of all of us, a presto amici. Ciao.